In this video we'll build a very quick example of a foot rig, and we'll be using a system which is commonly referred to as a reverse foot rig. The reason we use this setup is we'll need to control the leg from the foot. This rig will allow certain types of movement, like having the character stand on their heels or their toes. It will also allow the foot to pivot, so we can stand on the side of the foot as well. Usually a controls hierarchy will pass down a chain, starting at the root and heading towards the tip. In this case, however, we'll be reversing that hierarchy, hence the name reverse foot rig. In this scene, I've created a basic leg, and we can start rigging this by adding in a basic IK. I'll use the IK chains node. In this case, we'll have a single chain. I can then select the points for the IK. The first point will be my root, which in this case would be a thigh. I'll then have the middle joint, which will be my knee. And finally, we'll have the tip, which will be the ankle. We specified the joints for deformation, and now I'll have to create the controls. So for these, we'll need a rig pose node to manipulate these controls. I'll also want a delete joints node so I can specify which points I need. I can connect these up to my rig. The delete joints will be connected to the leg and then to the rig pose. And I can delete the points I no longer need. In this case, I'll delete the first point, which in this example could either be thought of as my root or my thigh. I do not want to maintain the hierarchy for the controls, so I'll get a reparent joints node. We'll need one reparent operation. In this case, I'll remove the entire hierarchy and I'll make sure that everything is parented globally. The IK chains node can now be updated. We can set the twist control and we can set the tip control. In this case, these would be the same joints as I use for my knee and my ankle. The blend should be set to 1 or the IK will have no effect. We should now have a working IK for the leg and I should be able to control them with these control points. The leg control has been set up so now we can implement the foot rig. Our controls will be added prior to the pose node. I will start with the delete joints node and I want to get a point which has the same position as the ankle. In this case, that point will be called point 2. I'll select this point and delete all the non-selected points. The point's name will have to change to avoid naming conflicts, so I'll get a name node, and I'll rename this point to be leg. This is going to be my main control for the leg. We will also need to make sure that this name's class is registered as points. We now have the main control for the leg, and we'll need to have controls for the pivots of the leg. We'll need to pivot the leg from the heel, from the inside of the foot, and from the outside of the foot. I will create these points using an add node. We'll need to add in three points, and I'll activate these points. I'll get a rig doctor node to convert these into joints. I'll call these joints offset, and I'll initialize the transforms. These controls can then be merged with the leg control. In order to position these points more accurately, I'll activate the visibility on my leg to make sure it is ghosted. The first point should be placed at the heel. This will be one of our main controls and will be controlling the pivot from the back of the foot. I'll then need to have an inner offset, which will be the pivot for the inner side of the foot, and the outer offset, which will be the corresponding pivot on the opposite side of the foot. To make the controls a little bit clearer, I'm going to get an attached control geometry node. The control will be created using a control node. I'll set the control type to be circles, and I'll set the display to be solid, and this will give me a sphere. I'll connect this to my control geometry, and we'll start by attaching it to everything. I haven't given my control a name yet, so we'll get a name node to do that. And I'll give it the name sphere. This will complete the extra controls for the foot. None of these controls will control the foot directly. These controls are actually only going to have influence on the rest of the control hierarchy, and we'll still need the controls to control the bones of the foot. We'll get these controls directly from our rig geometry, so I'll plug my main controls into the merge node as well. This will lead to controls being attached to all of the control points. There is, however, one point which we do not want to attach any controls to. And that joint will be the joint that we use for the ankle. In this case, it will be point number two. 
So we'll set everything to have controls except point 2. To have these controls be useful, we'll need to reparent them. We'll do this with the reparent joints node. This hierarchy will start at the end of the chain and move its way back up the length of the leg. We'll start with the master control for the setup, and this will be our leg control. The leg control will be the parent of the heel pivot control. I'll move the parent node before where I attach my joints to make the points more visible. And my heel point is not in a very good position. I'll just fix that quickly. The heel pivot will then be the parent of one of the pivots for the side of the foot. This can be either the inner or the outer pivot. My personal preference is starting with the inner pivot, but it doesn't make any real difference. This pivot will be the parent of the pivot on the opposite side of the foot. So in this case, the inner pivot will be the parent of the outer pivot. We can then start attaching the points that we've got from the actual rig geometry. In this case, my outer pivot will be the parent of my toe. I'll then have the toe be the parent of the foot. This could also sometimes be either the ball of the foot or the bridge of the foot, depending on how complex your foot rig setup is. And finally, I'll have my foot be the parent of the ankle. This is not the easiest joint to select, as my leg control overlaps my ankle. This should complete the control hierarchy, and I can plug this into my rig pose node so we can take a look at it. So I've now reset all of the animation and removed any of the excess animation from the rig. And the controls work when we are driving the motion of the leg. However, at the moment the foot bones are doing nothing. What we actually want them to do is point in the direction of the respective foot controls. To do this, we'll get a rig attribute VOP. The main rig will plug into the first input and the controls will plug into the second input. I'll enter the node and I'll get a set point transform node. I'll also need a get point transform node. I'll be getting the point transform from the first input. And in this case, I want the point transform to be my ankle. The current name for the ankle is point two. We'll be driving the transform for this point using the look at solver, specifically the KineFX version of the solver. In this case, I'll want to use vector transforms. The reason I'll want to use vectors is I've not created any objects to use specifically as up vectors. I'll then set the look at axis. In this case, I set my transforms to look down the z axis, and I'll use negative y as my up axis. I'll then need something to actually look at, so I'll duplicate the get transform node. This will be looking at a control, so I'll look at my second input. And since this is the ankle, we'll be looking at point 3, which in this case would be my foot or the bridge of my foot. Since I'm not working with transforms, I'll want to get the position of this point, and I'll do that using the extract transform node. I can then use the transform to set the 2 value. This will make the ankle look at the foot's position, and my bone is now pointing towards my foot control. We'll then need an up vector so we can make sure that the foot's rotation is correct. This up vector will be based off the transform of my foot, but it will need to be a vector. To create the vector, I'll get a float to vector node. This will allow me to create a unit vector. In this case, it will be a negative unit vector in Y, so I'll set the second value to negative 1. We can then transform this vector so it is appropriate for the foot control. To do this, I'll multiply the vector by the transform. So I'll need a multiply node, and we will multiply our vector by our matrices. The vector should always be the first entry in this multiplication. We can then plug the result into the up value for the lookup node. My foot bone should now be facing the foot control correctly. I'll then duplicate this node for my toe. The main rig will pass into the first input, and the control will pass into the second input. The point I want to set now will be my foot. In this case, it will be point 3. The foot will be looking at the toe. This toe is currently named point 4. All I need to complete this should be the renaming, so we should now have a working foot. The tip of the toe should now control the rotation for the foot. 
The foot control will control the rotation of the foot through to the ankle. This in turn will control the eye cave for the leg. Conversely, the leg control will control the entirety of the foot and the leg. We should now be able to rotate and pivot around the heel. We can also rotate the foot along its side using the side pivots. And these will work with our standard leg transform. And that's a very basic overview of how to create a reverse foot rig. Unfortunately, I didn't have time to go into more depth in how this actually works, but hopefully this will be useful.